Hi guys, it's your girl Joel. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're just going to get straight to the point. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, share, comment. What we're going to talk about today is how much I make as an accountant in Jamaica. I know you guys are curious because you guys know I talk about financial management, money management all the time. So I'm sure you guys must be wondering like, how much money she make. But they just called me on the phone. The only thing they asked me was how much I was being expected to pay. And when I told them the figure, they just said, okay, thank you. And that was it. First thing I want to talk about is like, just to touch on it at least, it's like the current brain drain in Jamaica right now is ridiculous. Everybody is leaving anywhere them can go, them gone. You know, first it was the nurses. The nurses have been going for years, including my best friend. You know what I mean? No, it's the teachers. Who knows who's next or which group, which set of, you know, career personnels are next. But anyway, what I want to talk about as well is what I believe is defeating us in this aspect. Why people don't make a lot of money and why they stay in a particular salary bracket for a long time. Including myself have been, I don't want to say a victim of that, but I've been in that situation as well. And I refuse to be in that situation ever again in life. And that's why I'm sharing with you what got me out of that and why I'm staying out of that. Because I'm always going to get what I deserve, period. <laughs> what I think is holding us down is that a lot of the companies, they never ever advertise how much the jobs pay before you actually get the job and it's totally different in all other markets if you go on american website for a job you will see what the monthly salary is you will see some of the benefits even as far as the benefits you'll see some of that whether it be canada america singapore europe everywhere except jamaica i don't know about other caribbean islands you guys can drop a comment below if you're from any other caribbean island or any island let me know if the job websites in your country do they advertise the salary of the position or the salary that comes with the position drop a comment below and let me know in jamaica they don't it's very seldom that you will see a company do that and if they do that it's most likely a foreign company or not a company that's well established here the other comp the companies that are well established here and well known they don't do that not until you actually get the job then you'll know how much money they're offering to pay you for your services and so you know like a person like me would just apply for all the jobs and then should i say waste time waste time doing all these interviews only to be offered a salary that you have no interest in and then you know what's the most ugh, distasteful thing that i think is is put against us and chokes us so that we don't even ask is that it's considered inappropriate if you ask what's the salary amount before you even get the job or if you ask it during the interview it come across as if you're just doing it for the money but hey really and truly what are we working for isn't are we working to get paid so why is it such a bad thing to ask at the job interview anyway it's this whole you know, this don't ask don't tell kind of thing anyway so i think that's one thing that's choking us <laughs> And I don't think that's good. I wish the companies would do that. And I don't know who is going to be that person to implement something which allows them to do that. I don't know if a law needs to be implemented or something. But people need to know because you could be applying for two jobs at the same level. But one might pay 200000 and one might pay 100000 And then that's just, the, the disparity is just ridiculous. You know what I mean? So, and let me tell you. I'll go into that because I can speak from experience. So you guys know I wasn't working for a while, a long time. If you consider six months a long time, but that's a long time for me because that's that's living for six months with no official income or no income that I was earning. I was basically living off of my savings and what I got paid out from my redundancy, which thankfully was a good sum of money, right? Because it carried me for six months and I still had a little left after. But anyway, so what happened is that after my job redundancy, or even before the job redundancy, I was applying for jobs because I realized that I couldn't live on the salary that I was living on. Like, I had to work overtime for the first two weeks every month, every single month. And then along with the overtime hours, you also get supper and traveling allowances for every day that you work overtime. Now, I was taking home a decent penny. Now, when the pandemic hit, 
I really got to see the value of my salary, my basic salary. It was ridiculous insulting actually <laughs> like this is what i was getting paid i literally was living hand to mouth from like the march to the june before the redundancy because when i do that redundancy was effective june 31st and that was very quick because i found out the 30th and it was effective the 31st but funny enough even the friday before so the redundancy i was informed on the monday and up to the friday before i did a job interview just to show you how much i wanted to leave that job not just for the fact that my basic salary was crap but also for the fact that i was no longer growing i wasn't allowed the opportunity to grow and learn more and i just finished my master's degree and i felt like i plateaued and i wanted to leave simple a lot of people said to me at the time like why are you job hunting like you're not going to get any jobs now because of the pandemic had i believed those people <laughs> i'm the type of person that anything i want i'm going to go after it. it doesn't matter what i'm just tunnel vision and so even though there's a global pandemic pandemic happening around i didn't care about that i didn't see none of that all i saw was getting myself a job to pay me what i deserved and i was determined to get that and so when the redundancy happened i was actually very happy and the payout even made it better <laughs> yeah but as i was saying it's ridiculous here because the jobs ever since the redundancy i did an interview for two straight months i had an interview every week sometimes two interviews sometimes three interviews and then they were the problem was that they were just not offering me what i deserve and i was not going to settle because coming out of the situation where i was not being paid well i was not going to put myself back in that position again especially after i just spent two whole years you know getting my distinction and my master's degree i was not going to go back to a level of being dissatisfied with my salary and so even management positions i was offered one company even said to me you know since you don't have managerial experience this will be a way for for me to gain the experience even though i'm getting a little salary i was not interested none at all i was not gonna settle and i was determined to wait however long it took even if it meant i had to do something different in life i was gonna just follow the course of the journey until i felt satisfied and that's exactly what i did the other point i want to drive is that i think it's also important as peers to discuss our salary amongst ourselves so for example me who's like a senior accountant i believe it's important for me to discuss salaries with other senior accountants or even chief accountants and you know financial controllers i believe it's important so that when i go for or since i'm trying to elevate i would know what salary range i will move on to next i will know if the current salary range that i'm in if it's a good one or if you know i need to get myself out of it and i had to learn that lesson the hard way and i was in that position for years so what had happened was my last job right i had been working there since i was an intern now you know when you go in as an intern you only get a stipend you don't really get a salary but then as i went on staff and everything i was always like at a level that only thing only increase i got was like the annual five percent to go against inflation nothing big and so for me i really realized how little i earned when i actually was doing my master's degree and it became time to pay our tuition so we had to pay in order to sit our exams we had to pay a portion of the tuition or of the courses that we'd done so far so each semester we had to pay like an equal amount i think that amount at the time was like 187 per term i could be wrong but it, i think it was some it was either 187 or it was 87 thousand i don't remember something like that but what i know is that one particular semester i was saying i was asking everybody you know we normally say amongst ourselves you pay your school fee yet you know and we'd all say no i'm gonna pay it monday i'm gonna pay it friday when i get paid and i was like yeah well i have half of mine already so when i get paid you know i'll put the other half on it i remember nobody else saying that it was just me saying that everybody else was like when i get paid i will pay it and then so it clicked like my girlfriends they make enough each month to actually pay the amount you and i didn't and so i actually pull one of them aside and i'm like oh my god how much money you make because i i can't do that in one month and i eventually got to ask the others 
all of them were making like twice the amount that I was making. They were making like 200 and a thousand each month, or close to 200 or that bracket. I was making like 100 and a little bit. I mean, after my overtime that I'd make, as I say, I used to have to work overtime. After that overtime, and based on the allowances, mm, sometimes it could go up to that, to what they made. But something is wrong. I was like, is it that? I was, I'm at my job for so long and I didn't realize that this is what people are being paid in my field at this level. And it really dawned on me. Like, I had to do something about it. And so that's why I believe, guys, it's important. And make sure you guys remember this. It's important to make sure, ensure that you have these conversations with your peers. The ones who have the same qualifications as you, the ones who are in the same field. Because had I not asked, I would have thought that what I was making was enough. And it was not. It was atrocious. You know, so that kind of gave me the push to start. I even went as far as to go to my HR and ask them if I could get an increase. Especially since I was about to finish my master's. And what I was told is that it doesn't matter what kind of education or qualification I obtain during my course of being employed in my current position. If my workload didn't change or if my job description didn't change, I was never going to get an increase. And since I was not being offered the opportunity to learn anything new, to do anything new, I knew that my only way was to leave. So when the redundancy happened, it was actually a blessing in disguise. And I'm thankful for it every single day because it it's led me to where i am today right financially and otherwise as i was saying as having these discussions with your peer would allow you to to know where you're at or what pay bracket you belong in and what pay bracket you know your value your worth at whatever qualifications you have you, that everything needs to align your qualification your experience needs to align with your salary so have these conversations and also we need to find a way to get these jobs to, to, to advertise how much they're paying us because as I said it wasted a lot of my time when I did interviews. The only one I'd say is that I got a call before my redundancy for, for a job. They asked about a job I had applied for but they just called me on the phone. The only thing they asked me was how much I was being expected to pay. And when I told them the figure, they just said, okay, thank you. And that was it. They never call back, they never reach out. And I appreciated that. I actually appreciated that because I knew that these people were not going to waste my time to come to an interview. And I knew that they weren't going to let me waste their time by <laughs> conducting an interview with me if you can't pay me. So I actually think jobs should really do that because it makes sense. I've done plenty of interviews that I would definitely say could have been avoided because had I known the salary, I would have not even gone. Or I would not, let me not say not have gone. Because if I apply for a job and I get invited for an interview, I'm going to show up. But had you advertised how much you would pay me and I know that it's not what I want, I wouldn't come. And I did a lot of that when I could have stayed at home and saved my ass. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, another thing I'm going to say is, you know, guys, don't be afraid to ask for an increase. Your boss won't know that you need an increase if you don't ask for it. If you're in a job, especially if you start doing more work, don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm in this situation. I'm based on the work that, I, that I'm doing now. I would like to not ask for an increase or, you know, based on my financial position or based on the market no based on what people are paid in the market based on my experience and my qualifications and my workload i believe i deserve an increase and i'm asking for an increase don't be afraid to ask guys what you asking me to fire you if you ask for an increase no nothing uh nothing wrong with asking you won't lose sweats if you ask as a matter of fact, that's the only way you're going to get an increase is if you ask for it. You think your boss is going to come to you and say, Oh, Jody, do you want an increase? You know, um, Susan, do you want an increase? You think your boss is going to be giving out increases? No, you have to ask for an increase before you get an increase. So guys, don't be afraid to ask for that increase. It's one thing you remember from this vlog. Don't be afraid to ask for an increase, right? <laughs> And remember to have the conversation with your peers about how much money they make. And you know the what? only issue I have with asking is when people ask how much you make to be nosy, to be inquisitive. And I know also 
people might shy away from asking because guess what if i feel like because you live so lavishly i might not be afraid to ask you how much you make but because you know deep down that you probably live above your means if i ask you you might be offended and so i don't think people should judge people on that or judge anyone based on how they live just ask because you truly want to know if your salary you know if you're on the right path of what you're receiving don't ask to be inquisitive and get in the person's business like if somebody comes to me and asks me how much i make because they genuinely want to know how much they should ask for their position because they they're applying for a job in the same feel as mine or same position as mine or they have the same qualification as me and they want to know or make some you know judgment based on what figure they have in their head i will answer point blank as a matter of fact i'm going to drop my instagram handle right here and feel free to send me a dm this is probably the only time i'm going to read the dm <laughs> to answer anybody who is in the field my field of accounting and that goes to my video i will tell you how much i make if you're in my field i'm not just going to divulge the information on the internet to say oh i mix xyz you know to brag or anything because there's nothing to brag about but not to put myself out there like that but if you genuinely have a reason to ask I will, so if you're doing your masters and you want to have an idea of what position you're going for next and like how much that position paying the field drop me a dm i will answer you yeah deal so yes guys i'm not going to tell you how much money i make outright but what i will say is that you know i'm getting more of what i feel even though i know that like for so many other other people who have left what i make is not nothing compared to what people overseas will make so thanks for watching this video guys i will see you in my next video and if you have any questions you want to ask me other than that that i can answer in the comment section don't be afraid to ask as well all right guys so see you in my next video bye